we have Natalia. This is very similar to what Alter Ego did, I feel like, with the Natalia as well. They had a full, like, kind of team fight comp, but they also had the Natalia to flank towards that backline. Mm. But what backline are we talking about here? There's no backline. RRQ exactly. does not have a backline. Literally, everybody there is meant to dive. And I. Yeah. I think RRQ takes this game. I feel like they drafted to go for the backline, but look, there's nothing. You try to dive onto the Cho, you get kicked. You try to dive into the Aldus, you do no damage. Is this a Matilda role? Uh, mid, mid lane mid. Matilda? Yeah, mid lane Matilda. yeah mid with lane Matilda. Angela in the roaming position, that's going to be you know all new improved. Same roaming mid laner strategy from the side of RRQ. And again, the, the speed, man, the speed is going to be deadly. The speed? Yeah. The speed, the speed is, is going to be deadly. Speed going kills. to be deadly. So we will have to see here game number two between Rebellion and as well as RRQ. Drafts wise, Mirko, as we mentioned, he prefers the RRQ side, Arashi as well. So let's just jump into the left, Land of Dawn to see the conclusion between Rebellion and as well as RRQ. As now, let's just jump into the portal, my guys. Yeah, we're in the portal. We're in the Land of Dawn here for game number two. Again, we can elaborate on this, Arashi. Why do we like RRQ's draft? You, you prefer RRQ as well, right? Right, because they seem to be on point with what they want to do. This composition, you can tell, it's about making that macro play and moving all over the map in, you know, in a very fast fashion. So with all this, with Ling, I think it's going to be very tough for Rebellion to try and match the mobility. And we saw earlier how much of a detriment that could be to your winning chances. And on the beginning, we can see that Vin already protecting Skylar. So Albert decides to take the orange buff first to delay the purple buff spawn when the turtle is up. So a very smart play from the side of RRQ. Still no aggressive, special and fancy movements from both of the teams here, Mirko. But I expect aggressive movements perhaps after the turtle. After uh, level 4. Yeah, fun fact, actually, I am a lane player, so I do... I can't explain that, but what the heck, Val? Just gets obliterated right there, forced to back away instantly. But yeah, back on to my point for Ling. Now, I'm a Ling player, not a good Ling player, but I know the macro stuff when it comes to this hero. You actually want to start orange buff every single time if you have the winning lane in the side of the mid and the side of the uh, turtle. All right, why? Because you want the purple buff to be up when you take that turtle. But the thing is, if you actually have a losing lane in the mid and the turtle side, Say bye-bye to that purple if you start orange buff. Yeah, so it all depends it, on the composition. But if you actually do have the composition to do that, you always want to do it. Always start orange. Take notes, guys. Take a look at the top mm -hmm. side here. Val and Zoz Viral already somehow pressuring Skylar. But Skylar does not care the disrespect with the recall. Recall there, top side. Take a look at Turtle here. Albert already with the initiation of Vin and Clay backing him up. Oh, R7 already moving. Jisa! Trying to find something, Cecilian already bad impact, but Wave Dragon connects onto a Jisa first blood for RRQ, presented to you by Samsung Galaxy A series. That's the difference in the levels there, the ultimates already available for the set of RRQ. That is insane. And honestly, in the early game, Val has a lot to do in this in this game to make sure that in the early game, Rebellion has something going on at least. And so far, he hasn't been able to find any success as far as playmaking goes. First turtle goes to the side of RRQ, and Albert, despite having uh, going up against Inatalia, has been able to farm very, very comfortably, not having any issues at all. Oh, top side, Skyler! Oh, gets bursted down there by b No, solo zero chance, solo kill. Zero chance of survivability, and it is a reset one for one, Amerigo. We do need to take note that in that top side, it is going to be Aldis having a tough time going up against the carry. Remember, carry with her mobility, even though it's just a little dash, it is so much damage, mm -hmm. right? You can literally just melt this guy down. He's literally practically just food for the carry. Mm -hmm. Very quick meal for the carry. Like the meals you can get with grab food. MPL IDX grab, guys. Don't forget, Mirko will scold you if you do, but play on the top side of the map right now. Val, moving aggressively, using her skills on towards Clay, the Matilda. So no commitments just yet. But we can see here from the minimap that oh. the rotation from the side of RRQ. Oh, never mind, top side. Another kill. Albert, though, trying to find compensation with that Tempest of Blade with the help of Heart, heart Guard as well. Still no commitments, no connection for members. Top side Ooh. rebellion who looks 
for a kill on towards Clay, circling Eagle connects. What? But G Shot oh, gets taken down. Albert once more as he might be able to take down Swelo. There you go, Swelo with the flicker. This still able to survive, but Val will not be able. Oh, oh never mind. Ooh. The disrespect. One for one. Rara Kyuhoshi, what? And what a defense from side of Rebellion, man. This is amazing. Again, Rebellion and Zion, a team notorious for their early game, going up against RRQ, practically the same. And we can see basically the mechanical battle from both of these teams. Albert on the lane, and even Biro here shining on the carry up against Skylar's Aldous. Well, I'm impressed that for the you know, for the most part, in that fight, Rebellion was able to arrive a lot faster. We talked again about the speed difference, and despite having the hard guard, the Finch points as well on Albert, Rebellion had the advantage in that fight. But as you can see, man, if they mess up even a bit, Ark Hoshi is quick on the rotation, yeah. and they need to be aware of that. It worked out for them in that, in that engagement, but they might not get so lucky in the second one. Wave of Dragon connects onto Dry and Dairu, and will not be able to escape. Cho will claim that kill, but take a look, hard guard. Ooh. Albert is there. Oh, what a catch! Swelo will not be able to survive! Clay once again picks up the kill. RRQ 2 for nothing, and it is going to be a free turtle for the side of RRQ. Yeah, you really just, when you see Albert on this lane, it is something different, man. He rarely steps on it to the ground. But Val, oh! what to be able to go steal it, Connie? What a play by Val. What a calculation by Rhino oh. RQ as the opportunity to punish Way of Dragon onto as well. Albert with the Vince Boys will able to get a killing spree onto as well. R7 might Ooh. be next. Jisa wants his life. R7 is there. Oh, R7 is escapes with the help of Clay, Swaylon as well as Jisa in the mid side. No more engages, but what a steal from the side of Val, man. That's what you need to do on this Natalia. Use the invisibility for, you know, the, those crazy plays. Again, Albert didn't know. That's why he didn't use the retribution. He wanted to greet it out and instantly Val with the pounce. That was beautiful to watch, Arashi. But what else can Rebellion do to take this game back? Because right now, it is still RRQ with the gold lead, even though they're lacking in turrets. It's just very tough for them because at this point, Natalia isn't snowballing as hard as she could be in this game. And Jisa is on the Pokito, but he hasn't been able to find a lot of circuit missions where he would actually get the advantage. It's always RRQ pulling the trigger whenever they have the advantage of the hard guard and makes it very difficult for Rebellion. Oh. What they need to do is to make sure they do scale well, but another fight breaks up. Way of Dragon connects on towards the jungler of Rebellion. Jisa gets taken down. Right now, Albert with the Tempest and Blade wants Swelo. He oh. will take down, but Beal is the target first. Will go down as well in the bot side. Only Ruby survives in the top side. It will be a mini wipeout for the side of RRQ. Oh my goodness. Once again, Albert on the Ling. It's something we rarely see because of just how respected it is, but it's great to finally see it again in the MPL stage. Woo -wee. What was that? At this point, I'm tired of getting surprised by his plays. <laughs> man, oh man, right now RRQ with the two and a half gold, gold, oh gold lead. Man, I, it's so hard for me to breathe. The way of Dragon connects onto a giant Tempest to play as well. But RRQ is so disciplined that they see no opening. They immediately with the disengage outside though. Val as well as Jisa with the gang onto with Skylar. Oh, Skylar with the chase weight will escape his life there. Still surviving and it is mm -hmm. still RRQ leading. Oh wow. R7 just taunting at this point. You, we all know R7 likes to freestyle. He's going in right now, actually. Oh, oh my god, he based I'm offended. It's RRQ are just styling at Re on Rebellion at this point. That literally baited three. I mean, that was an I'm offended. Pop. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's the turtle instantly taken. So I don't know what to do anymore. R7, man, on this show. Right now, R7 somehow playing with their food here. Hero trying to deal damage. Dyron looks for, for, looks for an opening, wow. but where Dragon connects on towards Dyron. No follow up damage just yet. Only for skills. Dyron is still in the Land of Dawn. Well, the longer this game goes, the more the Sicilian will be an issue. And aside from that, the carry is also going to be a huge source of DPS. Whereas for the side of Arkehoshi, oh. Albert's damage will fall off, but not just yet. Albert with the hard guard wants Piro. Oh. He gets taken down. Unstoppable for Albert. He wants more. Dyron is going to be next. But in the back side, Val gets oh. taken down. I'm offended. Can I start with Albert? But Albert with the Finch Boys clutching. There you go. Two for nothing for the side of RRQ. I, 
I'm I'm trying to find words every single time. Albert, I, I don't get it. I just really don't understand. Arashi, he, the way he just uses the Finch Poise, the way he uses every single ability, even he just knows the literal limits of this hero. Did you see how he was able to play that? He didn't go for the instant fast hand on to all blades. He waited. He waited, went to the bottom side first, took one blade for the kill, then he went up again. He picked up the first one, got up to half energy before he decided to go for the Temp of the Blades, and he, I mean, uh, for the Divine Sword, and he even saved the Finch Poise for that I'm Offended. Man, I'm Offended connect on towards R7, R7, this time without the Flicker will not be able to escape. Our Rebellion starting to find something, trying to find trades. Stop side here, we can see here, Val and as well as Skylar dealing damage to each other, but no, nothing to fancy just yet. Arashi, continue with your analysis. Well, usually we see that eventually the v Natalia will be used in a split push kind of strategy, but with the Aldous on the team, right, he's gonna build defensively, Natalia can't 1v1 him, and he can use the chase fate to arrive in fights no problem. Well, if that doesn't work out, Albert on the lane can do the same. So right now, in the late game, there are still options that RQ can use, but for sure, the longer the game goes, the more damage, the more dangerous Rebellion will get. So RQ Hoshi need to try and make a decisive play quite soon, because otherwise, this is exactly what Rebellion wants to do. Fighting again and again and actually falling further and further behind is not according to your game plan. But right now at 10 minutes, 3,000 gold difference is quite a big contrast to the first game. Yeah, but the thing is now we're going to take a look at the items, Arashi. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? Well, Diamond with the has claws, right, is able to be a lot more durable because in the fights, everyone ends up crowded up together. So that is a lot of uh, value on that item. And Natalia with the immunity for physical damage is able to be a bit more impudent. But here we go. 2 for 1, 2v1, but fell! What even, dude? Still survives, particularly the midside, R7 Debate. here. Need to be careful, Tempest of Blade connects. Oh! Whoa. 4 for 1 is just too much. Albert finally gets Tyler. shut it down. Chase Raid connects. Skyler wants something. Trying to deal damage, trying to find compensation, but be careful! Oh. Tyron with the kill. Skyler is down right now. Our rebellion looks for a comeback. They want more, they are still with five, and now they want the Lord. Swelo has scaled. This is where it gets very scary. Even Albert wasn't able to maneuver himself out of that one. He got completely obliterated, one shot it instantly, and this is where Rebellion can shift the tides. We mentioned this earlier, Arashi. The later the game goes, the harder it is for RRQ to get a grasp on it. They've been playing around way too much with their food, and Rebellion, they're no longer just food. They are bulls raging. Mm, this is the replay by the Samsung Galaxy A series. R7 since the beginning, already getting taken out, and the hard guard is no longer available. Albert gets shot down immediately, and right now is essentially a 3v5 for the side of RRQ. They try their best to go in, but Swelo can maneuver and kite back, and when the Cecilion can just dash out bad impact upon bad impact, that is where your team starts falling down. So they need to try and make sure that in any fight, from this, point, uh, from this point on, Swelo will be the main focus. Because otherwise, it's going to be a very tough situation, man. It's The thing is, if you go and target Swelo, Beardle is there instantly to free hit. And you already have this front-to-back composition that really synergizes well with those two damage dealers. You already have Dyron with the I'm Offended basically zoning Albert away with also Jisa providing cover with a knockout strike. They can just combo wombo it and RQ might not be able to do anything. Again, they're sieging down the base. RRQ are on the back foot. They mm -hmm. are defending. Rebellion though with the comeback. Take a look at the gold shifting towards their side. Already almost a 2k gold lead and Skylar here. Will it will will Skylar be enough to somehow turn this game back around, Rashi? Remember, Cecilian is on the side of Rebellion. Well, the macro play option is still available for RRQ, but Skylar will be the main target right now. Okay, three for one. Skylar is the target. Flickers oh, away. Albert. But take a look at the Albert. flags. Suelo gets taken down. Tempest of Blade towards the backside. Biru will not be able to escape. Albert. As Way of Dragon. But Albert is going down. Val might be next, but take a look at Tyrant. Skylar is going to take. Nope, oh, definitely not. Vin is going to take that kill. Three for one. For the side of RRQ Hoshi. Rebellion with the gambles. Did not pay off. This yeah. is just classic RRQ, man. Being on the back foot, stuck in their base, Lord approaching. What do they do? They deal with the Lord and they wipe your team out. This is why you can never count them out, but now another fight breaks out. Skylar with the help of guard, hard guard right now. So confident, dealing damage. Val, remember Natalia's damage fall off. 
They want the mid side. Jisa trying hard to clear the wave. Oof. Manages to do so. It is just a definitely brawl in the mid side. This is such an entertaining game. Even Woo! though they've just been back and forth. RRQ controlling the early stage. Rebellion coming back after getting those items necessary for their power spike. Carry and Sicilian. They are going to be a huge threat. Once again, it's it's just going to come down to execution. And I love it because it really shows the skill of both of these teams. Rebellion will have the upper edge actually when it comes to the late game. But Albert now in a 1v1 oh! foul, winning it out. Pal with the trades, but remember... Oh! Oh! The execute comes into play! Skylar will not be able to escape and Melody pops off, but there you go, Suelo with the kill. Two members down for side of RRQ Hoshi. That's Rebellion. They look for another Lord. Three members only up. Angela, Matilda, and as well as Cho. Will they be able to delay this push? The Bulls charge straight at their target. This is the Enhanced Lord. Val has just been phenomenal on this Natalia. And he baits Clay. Uh-oh, Clay Ooh. isolated. Will not be able to escape. As now with the Lord push. Rebellion. Rebellion and Zion looks to close the game. Will they be able to do so, Rashi? They do have the high ground. What? They do have the range advantage to make this happen. This is where RRQ, whenever they lose the advantage, whenever they lose the initiative, they seem to get confused. They are dazed by the aggression from Rebellion Zion right now. And with the Lord marching on the top side, mid lane will be pushed out by Rebellion and they want to get a decisive team fight here. With an extra Lord as the sixth member of their team, they're going to go for a decisive fight right here, right now. Oh, oh no! defended connects, but thankfully, thankfully, a flicker is still there, are seven. Lord, charge towards the top base to it. Can we taken down though, but man. Can we rewind it a bit? How did Albert lose in a 1v1 against a Natalia? He it's it's a one and four Natalia. This I don't get it. Holy Val. Again, showing class here in game number two. But the thing is, this is the pick that we actually um, you know, criticize the Rashi. It doesn't really fit in the team because they want to play it front to back and there's no backline for RRQ, but it seems like it's exactly how Onik beats this Ling back in M3 with the Natalia from Voloisky. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but right now, our seven here takes uh, taking a lot of damage with the help Ooh. of Matilda, will not be able to escape. Matilda, but me Max, take a look at the flanks. Clay, no with way. that circling eagle, will not be able to escape as a rebellion. Still strong with five. They, can they take down the bot side here. Finn, Albert, as well as Kyler, trying to defend. Jisa taking a lot of damage in the front side as no minions. There are no minions. RRQ still able to defend this one. A rebellion, no objective on the board. They just want to clear the mid side and as well as take the purple buff off from Albert. What a game, ladies and gentlemen. 15% of audiences voted for Rebellion. And this is why the straight up aggression from the Bulls, it really fits their name. But now it's time for another siege, another chance for Rebellion to end the game. RRQ, they need to pull everything. They need to start targeting the right targets. One more mistake and it's over. They have to yeah. make sure they actually get start the fight properly as well. When they are the ones who initiate, we see that they can find success. When they wait for Rebellion to make the first move, they fall behind. Initiative is the name of the game for Araki Hoshi, and they need it more than ever right now. If they can pick up Suelo, if they can take care of Biro, this game can still go in their favor. But as the clock keeps ticking, it is almost 18 minutes right now. Rebellion is stronger than ever, and RRQ for sure is on the back foot. Positioning and timing will be key here. As we take a peek a little, oh. presented by Alita, player head to head Skylar winning in three categories. It's strange because when we're talking about Bureau, he usually gets caught off on the side. That's true. But kill participation wise, he actually participates in more team fights, it feels like, with the 62% over Skylar's 59. 59. But the thing is, it's not because of the participation, I feel like. It's because RRQ, they just look for picks all Total across kills, the board. Yeah. And now, it's time for him to prove himself. Will he be able to use this Aldous to a good effect? Because Natalia jumping in already. Uh-oh, Val. Oh. This oh, no. might be a mistake. Val gets taken down for nothing. Clay will pick that kill up. R7. Strange way of Dragon Flicker is there. Oh, with the help of Matilda Airlines. He is able to disengage. Right now, Rebellion looks for an invade on the purple buff. Albert will not have that purple buff. What a play. Huge. Suelo will have that purple buff. It is going to be huge in the next couple of minutes.
I, I feel like they could have actually pursued that fight a bit more. Skylar was already on the way with the chase fate. Now, with that being down, Rebellion has a chance to actually control the Lord side. And Skylar is still quite far, and that may be dangerous oh, for them. R7 again with the baits. Right now, R7 will go down. Immortal ta immortality Albert? is there. But killing spree, Albert with the hard card. Oh. Wants the back line. Tempest of Blade pops. Clay will not be able to survive. Double kill for Suelo. As Chase oh. immediately shot shots. Beryl, but triple kill for Suelo. Vin might be next. Oh. It is a 4 for 2 right now. As Skylar! It's an end. Gets taken down. Rebellion Zion. The Blue Bulls looks for an end as Vin. No as the only member for side of RRQ will definitely be not be able to defend this one. Rebellion showing strong. 1-1 one, one in the series. Guys, Rebellion Vin Rashi, we got a game number three. Blue Bulls strikes back. They've done it. How in the world? Albert Ling has cracked in season nine. They stay, he stayed at 100% win rate for season seven. 100% wow. win rate for season eight, but 2022, season nine, it's no longer the Ling era. What just happened? Rebellion charging straight to their enemies. Arashi, explain. They just, they just were able to actually get objectives and I, we know we mentioned already that RRQ, despite all our praise about how they're being controlled, one of their main weaknesses is they are prone to overextending and getting overhyped. In this game, they had all the control, they had all the tools available to actually pressure Rebellion before their power spikes happened, but they did give away uh, several shutdowns. And I think with Man. that small advantage, Rebellion showed to the audience and to us more than ever that if you give us the tools, we can still take the game from you. Deja vu, guys. Last time, literally yes, just yesterday, against a blue team, they